Welcome to a general overview. We will show how we construct this simple aircraft model using language elements and how to display the model in a web user interface using X3DOM. And this is called a Premi plane, stands for primitive plane. In order to get more background on this, you can go to genworks.com and for now it's on new site in the near future, just the normal genworks.com site. And under the documentation section here, we have educational resources with several playlists of videos. Each one is just about five minutes or less. And having gone through the first half hour or so of these, you will have a more detailed understanding of what we are talking about here. But as you can see, in a typical definition, we have slots, and then the definition can contain child objects. And these are instances of other definitions. So a couple of key points here. We see that the specification for these child objects, for example, the wing assembly, is completely declarative. So this can be read like a P list or property list, and these are slot names. So the span comes from the data wing span, for example. The root center is just a 3D point that specifies where the wing assembly is based for its local center. And that's an expression here, for example, that translates the center here in the parent according to some direction and distance within the local coordinate system. Unlike a procedural program where you have a begin and you have to debug procedurally, with this we can see very declaratively if there's an inaccuracy or an error at one of these levels. And we can go in the different branches and inspect on particular objects. Only after we click on one of these unevaluated symbols, for example, will the system do the calculation and remember the result. The interesting feature to note is that when we look at this definition, this is a definition for a simple web user interface which displays the geometry using X3D or X3DOM and generates all the HTML and user interaction elements using a completely unified syntax using exactly the same define object, the same kind of declarative syntax. We now have an object tree just as before, except the child objects now are the actual elements that make up the web page. So here is that web page, which is a very simple one just so that we can see uh, the elements without any style sheets getting in the way or anything like that. And if we change, for example, the wing dihedral angle to something exaggerated like 30, we can see the change right away in the X3 DOM output in the viewport. The other example that we put on here is changing the tail configuration to a cruciform or, for example, a T-tail. If it's changing the object or is just changing an attribute value within the assembly object? I think you're asking, is it changing the definition or is it just changing some value inside this particular instance. When I make a change over here, it does not change the definition. The only way to change the definition is by modifying the source code for the definition. But what we've just changed here is, for example, this tail configuration. We change the value. Right now, the default value for the tail configuration comes from the data. But I've set it up in the user interface so that we have an item called tail configuration, which is actually this form control on the web page. And with a few simple language constructs, we've wired the value of this form control to the value of the tail configuration in the model. From a single definition, without any need to change any source code, we are able to generate all these tail configurations, all from the same definition, just by passing different inputs in. That, that means that each time when you change the tail, it's actually just changing an instance of that object. Correct. It's changing the instance that we're looking at right now. Yeah, the thing is that actually in any code you can change values like 5, 30, etc. Right. But when you are changing the tail, you are actually changing the topology. Yes, that's correct. We're changing the topology based on the way the logic has been defined in the plane definition itself. Okay, based, based on this type of definition, actually you can define an entire family of uh, aircrafts. Correct. And just with this small amount of example code here, we actually define these three types of tail configurations. So again, the main point is using the same completely unified environment, we've put together the definition for this 3D object, very generic primitive plane, as well as the definition for a web page, which is displaying the plane, and we receive the output in full HTML and X3DOM with no further effort. Mm -hmm.